Today I'm going to show you how to go from this to this in just five steps and make sure these still work. Let's dive in. Go to About This Mac software update. Hit the upgrade now button. Oh wait, that's step four. Let's look at step one first. We're going to start by making sure that our software is compatible with Mac OS Sequoia. We're going to go to uaudio.com, support section, and in the search bar I'm going to type Mac Sequoia. I'll go ahead and click the first result on the list. And what we will find here is that the latest UAD software is compatible with Mac OS Sequoia. The only devices that are not compatible would be FireWire devices. So if you have something with FireWire, you're going to need to upgrade. If you don't have the latest UAD software, there's full instructions below on how you can install it on Mac OS Sequoia. Next, I'm going to go to Arturia.com support. I'm going to go down to the FAQ section. Once here, I'm going to scroll down to more information. Compatibility, Mac OS compatibility. And I'm going to click Compatibility, Mac OS Sequoia. Once here, we can see Arturia recommends to not upgrade at the moment. And it says that it's still validating compatibility for all products and stresses the need for caution. And it points out their legacy products in particular the player controller that has issues with MIDI note messages. Finally, we'll go to Ableton.com help. We'll go to live minimum system requirements, Apple and Mac OS compatibility with live. And then we're going to scroll down to Mac OS compatibility. And it states that they have not determined any issues with live 11 or 12, which is good news. Next, we want to look at storage. See how much space is used in your hard drive and make sure your external hard drive is large enough to accommodate the backup. Delete any files you don't need and consider moving other files to the cloud or an external hard drive. This will reduce the size of your backup, saving you time. Let's go ahead and search for and open the Time Machine utility. Once open, let's go to Options. This is going to show us the estimated size of our backup. Cancel out of that and then click Select Startup Disk. Let's pick our external hard drive and hit use disk and it will begin backing up your hard drive. It's going to show you a status bar with how much has been backed up and estimated time remaining. Once complete, it shows you your latest backup and when the next one will occur if you choose to do another one. Once the time machine backup is complete, it's always a good idea to check that your files are not missing. So I'm going to go to my external hard drive and check some music files. You guys should do the same thing and navigate to the directories that your most critical files are saved on and make sure that they're still there. If you notice any files are missing or anything seems off, you may need to do another time machine backup before installing Sequoia. Step 4. Installing Sequoia. Go to About This Mac. Software Update. Upgrade Now. Read through the license agreement and once ready, hit the agree button. Go ahead and put a password in if prompted to and hit OK. The system begins the install. While we wait, hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this. You'll see a status update with how much has been downloaded and time remaining. Once complete, restart your computer to complete the installation. Once your system reboots, you'll see a software complete notification, followed by a welcome to Mac message with a UA utility notification. Let's go ahead and go to About This Mac, take a look at our system information, we can see that it has been successfully updated to Sequoia 15.4. If you see this message, go ahead and allow the UA accessory to connect. All right, it's time to test our applications. I'm going to start with Universal Audio's console software. I'm going to start by loading a Unison plugin and playing some guitar to see what it sounds like. Now guitar with reverb. Now let's try some vocals. I'm going to copy the reverb plugin from aux1 to aux2 using the copy and paste buttons on the left side. 
I'm gonna change my aux to channel to pre-fader and adjust my send fader on my aux to channel. Let's see what it sounds like. Mic check one, mic check one, two. And finally, let me check to see if my system audio works. I'm gonna pull up a video here off YouTube and just make sure I could hear playback. Once the song starts playing, I'm gonna check back in with console to make sure I could hear it and see signal in console. All right, I do see signal on my channel and on the meters. So I think we're in good shape here. Now let's test my Minilab MK2 controller by opening up Analog Lab software. I'm gonna start with single note plugin. Okay, great. I'm gonna try this pad preset for a really cool sus13 sound. Sounding good. Finally, let's test Ableton Live 12. I'm gonna open up a saved project, and play a drum track. I can hear a signal and I can hear the drums. So I think we're good there. I'm gonna try adding keys to it. I can see signal for keys and I can also hear the keys playing along in real time with the drums. So I feel pretty confident that my Live 12 software is working the way I want it to. And that's it guys. That's how you successfully upgrade to Mac Sequoia 15.4. If you guys got value out of this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this. For those of you looking for help using your Apollo Twin or how to live loop with your MK2 controller in Ableton, check out these videos here. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.